What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be looking at a company called Diffbot. This is one of my favorite companies. I really like the problem space that Diffbot is working in. They are trying to organize the information on the internet. So they are crawling the entire internet. They are organizing this information into a knowledge graph. And the main product that Diffbot is offering and trying to be innovative on is their knowledge graph, which makes it easy for humans and machines to query the information on the internet and have structured data returned back. And in a number of ways, Diffbot is working to structure the information on the internet. So we're going to go through the products of Diffbot, the business of Diffbot, Diffbot and I'll, I'll also talk about this problem space a little bit of organizing the information on the internet because it's one that I am extremely interested in and I think that there's still a lot of opportunity in this space. And so the other reason why I really like Diffbot is because it is a successful AI company. It is not a company that has grown in a traditional Silicon Valley way. And that might be, you know, there might be good to that, but there could also be some downsides to that as well. So to kick this off, let's dive more into this company, Diffbot. So as I said, they're not very traditional. They have only raised $13 million, which is not a lot of money for this type of company, especially considering the fact that they run their own data centers. They are scraping the internet. They're crawling the internet. They're extracting information from the internet. So they're also saving this data, the raw data. And then they are uh, building up a knowledge graph and they have their knowledge graph running on databases in their uh, data centers. So there is a lot of technical components to this company. And there is a hardware component to this type of business as well. So the costs are very high. Also, they only have 11 to 50 employees, according to Crunchbase, which is not a lot of employees. This company has been around for a little while. I can't find the exact start date, but they've been around for a few years. And one of the things that the CEO, Mike Tung, has said in these podcast episodes is that they are not constrained by capital at this point. And that's one of the reasons why they're not going out and raising more money. They're more constrained by talent. They can't find the right talent for doing the the different things that this company does because they they're they're operating in so many different like really specific technical problem spaces. They they are doing the web crawling and for doing the web crawling they have their own um, web browser so they have web browser development which is not a easy thing to find talent for there aren't many people that have worked on web browser systems and specifically chromium so it's difficult to find people to do that part of things then on the AI side of, side of things, they have uh, computer vision for extracting information. And we'll go into the product in just a minute, but they have computer vision. They also have natural language processing. Um, and then they have information extraction and knowledge base development. And there's probably also a lot of work in uh, database organization, management, optimization, those types of things, because according to the CEO of Diffbot, they Diffbot has the world's largest knowledge graph. There, there are quite a lot of technical problems uh, to constructing that knowledge graph and being efficient about building that knowledge graph, querying that knowledge graph. And a lot of these areas that Diffbot is operating in are like completely new research areas. And this is the other reason why I like this company. It's just the innovation in, that is happening in this company is extremely interesting. They are a profitable company. Another reason why they don't raise money is because they are actually profitable at this point, which not a lot of uh, startups like aim for that, aim for revenue, for profitability. Instead, they, they stay pre-revenue for much longer. They raise a ton of capital. They're taking huge risk. Uh, so uh, kudos to Mike Tung for being able to de-risk the product because he's also said that 
he didn't even start this company until he had a solution that could do what he was trying to do um, in an efficient way or like in an accurate way because it's information extraction. So he didn't even start offering this as a product until he was able to um, efficiently extract information from the internet. And I think I just think that that's such an awesome approach to business, to building technology. Um, so uh, I really like this company for that those reasons. Okay, let's talk about their products a little bit. So on this product page, they this drop down, they have a few different um, parts here. They have the extract, crawl, natural language, and knowledge graph. As I mentioned, the knowledge graph is like the core product of Diffbot. But some of these other ones um, have have kind of allowed Diffbot to get to the point where they could actually build a knowledge graph. So in the very beginning, they they just had the extract and crawl, um, and these do seem like the fun like fundamental products of this business still. But their aim and their focus is on the knowledge graph. So let's talk about the extract part of things. Extract will take a URL. It will render this a page in their in their own browser. So you make a request to Diffbot. You say, I want data from this URL. And Diffbot is going to um, use their own browser to render that web page. And once that web page has been rendered, they are then going to determine what type of page it is. So if we click on data and we have this drop down menu, uh, Diffbot has has made a few assumptions about the types of pages that exist on the internet. They basically say that there are six types of pages. I've heard them say six. Here they're only listed. Um, there are only five listed. So we'll just say five. So there are five types of um, types of pages on the internet. Maybe news and articles are are like considered two. So five or six types of pages on the internet. So you can imagine that. You know that that constrains things a little bit because you could probably think of different types of these main types. Like you might be able to break this down even more. There might actually be like like over a hundred different types of pages on the internet, but it might be that six types of pages represent eighty percent of the information on the internet, something like that. So I think that's what they're going for. They're saying, all right, let's constrain ourselves and let's get the majority of the data by setting up these constraints. We can focus on tackling the problem of of extracting information from these pages. Now, if you typically render a web page um, in your browser, you're making your browser is making a request to to the URL that you want to go to, and HTML is returned, and several other requests are made. Maybe some JSON data is returned, and that that is used to modify or populate the HTML. But at the end of the day, what your browser is rendering is HTML. Now, HTML is unstructured data. There's some structure to it because there are these tags. But across these six pages and across the entire Internet for these six pages, there is very little similarity between pages on different websites. Like, for example, product pages. There's no like one HTML tag that is going to store the price of products on on the product pages across the entire internet. So like on Amazon, on Target, on Walmart, on all these different websites, all of the information for these products will be stored in very different ways. So although there is some structure to HTML, it is very unstructured data because this, the data, there's no like single representation for data across the internet. Um, and even, even if you do find the tag with the data in it, there can be variability in how the textual data is represented within the tag. So the price might be listed differently, might be like it might be grouped together with other text within tags of HTML. So the point here is that web data is unstructured. And that makes it very difficult for machines to work with this data. If you ever write your own web scraper, um, maybe in like Python, you're going to make requests to a website with Python, get HTML back, and then parse that HTML, find data within that HTML. That process is very difficult to maintain and to do at scale because you have to come up with these rules, specific rules for how to extract data from every website that you want to get data from. 
So imagine if you wanted to get data across the entire internet, like Diffbot is attempting to do, they're doing this at scale. So you're going to have different functions for parsing data from every single website, really. And, and also, websites are constantly changing. Almost every day, you would have dozens of, of um, code logic to modify because the website has, mo has been modified. So this is the problem that, that Diffbot is trying to address with this extraction engine. And now how they do this is they use computer vision. So they are rendering the web page in their browser and then they were taking images of that page. Very similar to how you and I look at a web page and extract information from it. They're doing the same thing. They're using computer vision to extract the information on a specific page. Um, like, you know, the attributes of a page will be similar. Like a product has a price, has a SKU, has a, I don't know, like a title, uh, reviews, a review has like um, text to it, has an author, has a date. These things are very similar. So the computer vision module will identify these these pieces of data on a web page and then there's natural language processing to then pull at, like extract the information from the image so probably like doing ocr uh, and then even after you've done ocr and you have that text data now you need to make sure that that text is correct is accurate and i wouldn't be surprised if diffbot would like fix misspellings and, and things like that on web pages because they they at the end of the day, they want highly accurate data and they probably have models that are that are correcting any inaccuracies in the OCR models or maybe even the computer vision models um, when it's actually going to render the text. So what do you get back from um, a request to Diffbot when you say, I want data from this web page? You get back JSON data. So you get back structured data for the web page. And this is the, the key, like the kind of like the core product of Diffbot. This is what they were offering initially um, to their clients. They said, okay, you can extract data from the internet. <clears throat> and by doing this, they then started to uh, see more and more data from the internet. They made their models better. Uh, and over time, they were able to, they had enough data that they were able to start working on building up their knowledge graph. Now, similarly, part of their product suite, they have this crawl capability. So you can say, okay, for this start domain, get me all the pages on this domain and like extract the data from all of these pages. So imagine like Amazon, I want all the products from Amazon. So start at, start at amazon.com and then just give me crawl all the pages and perform the extraction for all of the pages that is what the crawl capabilities are and, and really you can see this as like a, a suite of tools for web scraping for data extraction and now the core i won't really talk about the natural language so much because i i don't really know that much about this i mean i guess it's just they they allow you to um to find like entities in text and uh or like extract sentiment from text and and like maybe do some relational mapping between entities using their knowledge graph. So I guess that's what the uh, natural language product is. Uh, and But finally, they have this knowledge graph where you can query the knowledge graph. You can say, all right, I want, I want de software developers who specialize in .NET. And it would literally like pull you up a list of people that do that and like what companies they work for, all the associations with with that individual or those individuals or whatever entity it is. It connects entities to other entities that uh, that are found on the web. And one of the cool products that they have is like, if you have a CSV file with data in it, um, let's say it's like person's name, company they work for, email address, but some of this data is missing. You have like 100 records, but some of the data is missing. You can use their knowledge graph to go in and automatically um, like enhance the data as it says here. So that's that's what this example is saying. Like you can you can automatically um, fill in missing data and uh, add to data that you have. Maybe you have like a list of their names and the companies. Now you want their email address. So you can do those types of things with Diffbot. Okay. Now finally, let's talk about pricing for their products. They they have a consumption based pricing model, but it's it also there's also a subscription part to it too. So 
it's kind of pricey. That's that's one of the major drawbacks. I guess if you're using this in like a big company and you're you're able to get the value out of it, it's probably a reasonable price. And I'll I'll talk about some of the things why I why I think they they have this pricing so high. But just to understand the pricing a little bit, if we come down here, you can see that you get credit. If you, you can go over it. So it's it's like a consumption based model, but with like a base with a base subscription. They they have a breakdown for for the for the uh, credits here. Like you can do one one page extract, that's one credit, but then uh, you can also like do with um, with like residential proxies and that's gonna add to the price or data, cent uh, data center proxy. So there is this like breakdown of uh, how the credit system works. I don't fully understand, like I don't have like an intuitive sense of, of how pricey this is and how much it costs to actually use this product because th the pricing has just been such a barrier to me even really wanting to use this. Um, I, would, I would like if there was like a $50 subscription model or like just a complete consumption-based subscription model, but I think one of the reasons why it's beneficial to have higher pricing is that if you have lower tier pricing, then yes, you're going to open it up to many more people. But that doesn't necessarily mean that that's a good thing because now you probably are going to have much more customer support needs as well. So you you need to be prepared to scale out parts of your organization if you plan to offer lower tier pricing. One of the benefits of offer of only having higher tier pricing is that you're only going to have customers that really need your product and are willing to pay for it and can pay for it. So you also, you know, you limit the 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 customer service requirements and you also like kind of like automatically segment the type of customer that you're going after and that will likely use your product by by controlling the pricing. And I think having higher tier pricing can be a good thing. Now, you they could also do like a $50 a month plan, but only offer a yearly uh, subscription package with that. So, you know, like maybe it could be like five or pay $500 for a year with like, I don't know what it would be like 50,000 credits a month or 30,000 credits a month, whatever it comes out to be. I would like something like that. They do have the two week trial, but two weeks is not really that long. Like who has two weeks to just like play around with this? There's so much here that it's just, I don't know. It doesn't really seem worth it. I, I definitely think they could do more innovation on the business model side of things. I also feel like Mike Tung has said that, um, they're not capital constrained, but it's hard for me to believe that if they did, like if they did go out and raise funding, maybe maybe they could do more to pay pay higher salaries to the engineers that they need. I've looked at some of the the salary ranges on various websites for Diffbot, and they don't seem very high by uh, you know the Bay Area standards. I think probably offering higher salaries could be a good thing. And also, it seems like they're really only hiring senior engineers, which is a good thing, I think, for an early stage company. But if they are transitioning to like, this is an established company, we don't need to keep raising funding, we're going off of our own revenue, our own money, then, you know, invest in more junior engineers and train them on the skills that you need. I think that's another good strategy for growing this type of business. All right, there's probably more that I could talk about with Diffbot uh, and the problem space is really interesting to me. I think that there's still so much that can be done with the data of the internet. And one other thing that I'll say is what I'm really interested in is having combining these two things, having the data extraction part of, of um, web crawling, web scraping, but doing this in a more automated way. No no hard coded logic or rules using machine learning to extract information from web pages. I think Diffbot, they've constrained themselves, which is good for what they're ultimately trying to do. But I think um, by opening up the the different types of pages, like I've seen plenty of pages with that Diffbot does not work on. I think that there's still more data that could be captured in the internet, but combining this information extraction with actually performing actions in a web browser on the internet. So having being able to build AI uh, bots that can extract information from a web page, understand what this web page is about, and then make some decisions based on the information that is on that page about actions to perform either on that page or other pages. So this is like 
uh, full scale AI web automation. This is a problem that I'm very interested in working on. That's all I have to say about DiffBot here today. If you like this content, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next time.